Hi everybody, so today we'll be looking at mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. So let's begin by looking at a question. Here I have five students in a class, three of them take chemistry and four of them take physics. The question here is asking us to find the probability of um, taking either physics or chemistry. So when you look at this question, you might think, you know, uh, it says physics or chemistry. So let me try by just first finding the probability of taking physics alone. So out for probability of physics, that would be equal to, we have four people taking physics out of five people in the class. So that's going to be four out of five. And the probability of chemistry we have three people sorry three people taking chemistry out of five people in the class so that would be three out of five so for such a situation you may think to do just well physics or chemistry let me make that equal to four out of five plus three out of five and that's going to give us seven out of five but this would give you the wrong answer. But you see, the probability is already over 1, which is wrong. And here, if you think about it, we're saying 7 people out of just the 5 people in the class. And that doesn't make sense logically. So where have we gone wrong here? And the answer to that is with these two students here. These students are being repeated in both sets because they take both chemistry and physics. So when we're calculating the probabilities and adding them up, we are counting these two students again. We're counting them when we do uh, when we consider the probability of physics and we're counting them when we consider the probability of chemistry, which is why we're being mistaken here. So when we have such... Um, a situation we call it non mutually exclusive which means that both the events that we have given here physics studying physics and studying chemistry they can occur at the same time and when we have such a situation what we have to do is this part is correct but we have to do an additional step of subtracting the probability of studying both physics studying physics and studying chemistry okay so this sign here this is the intersection sign and it can be used to represent and all right so when I have events non mutually exclusive events I have to take uh, I have to find the probability of the repeating event and I have to subtract it from uh, this value here so my final answer would be 7 over 5, let me write it here, 7 over 5 minus, and the probability of studying physics and chemistry is uh, just 2 out of 5 because we only have 2 students, All right? And that's going to give me 5 out of 5, which is 1. And that makes sense, studying physics or chemistry, because all the students here, um, you know, they study either physics or chemistry. We don't have any student who is not taking any one of these subjects. So our probability of one makes sense here. Okay, so this would be our case with non-mutually exclusive events. And for this, we can, uh, based on what we've done here, we can come up with a formula. And that would be something like this. So this notation here, is the union symbol which can be used to represent or okay so when we have two events a and a and b and we want to find the probability of a or b occurring we say that is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus the probability of both a and b occurring and such a case is called non mutually exclusive because like I said before, the two events A and B can occur at the same time. All right. Now let's look at a different example. Let's say I have a deck of cards and I want to find the probability of finding either 
uh, let's say um, a king king or uh, the number five all right so how would I do this now let's try and follow this formula we want to find the probability of king finding a king or five so our event A is finding a king and event B is finding a card which reads number five all right so this probability of finding a king is going to be equal to uh, well in a deck of cards we have 52 cards so that's going to be my denominator and we have one king per suit so that's going to give me four out of 52 so we have one uh, hearts one diamonds one spade and one clubs so four out of 52 which is the same as one out of 13 okay and probability finding a five is the same thing one of every suit so four out of 52 which is one out of 13 All right so I have this answer and I'm going to try to put it into this form so probability of finding a or b is probability of finding a which is one out of 13 so one out of 13 plus probability of finding b again one out of 13 now here this part minus the probability of a and b so this means that what is the probability that I pick up a card from the deck and that card is both a king and a five All right so think about this I have a deck of cards I pull up a card at random all right and what is the probability that this card is both a king and the number five now this is strange if you're playing with a standard deck of cards and uh, we are assuming in this question that it is a standard deck of cards then there's no such card which has both a king and a five we have cards that are just kings or we have cards that are just fives but no card can give us both a king and a five so this event or this probability of a and b will never occur at the same time so these two events cannot occur at the same time which means that this value is going to be just zero right and here our final answer is just going to be 2 out of 13 such cases where we cannot have our events a and b occurring at the same time are known as mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive, right? So, uh, for mutually exclusive events, our intersection or the probability of A and B occurring is zero, and hence the formula is going to be just this part here. For mutually exclusive events, we have the probability of A or B to be equal to just the probability of A plus the probability of B because their intersection is equal to zero. They cannot happen at the same time. This is the basic idea of mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. So just to recap, let's look at this here. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B without the intersection and this is for mutually exclusive events. So this means that if I have two events A and B, I'm going to use a Venn diagram here, if I have two events A and B, then there is no intersection of the two. They cannot occur at the same time and hence this is just, uh, this is, is going to be my formula. But for non-mutually exclusive events, let's take a look here. This would be for non-mutually exclusive events, which means that if I have two events A and B, then they can occur at the same time. So my probability of A or B is going to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, which is the repeated part here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And thank you for watching.